Reimagining Success, episode 106. You're listening to Reimagining Success, the podcast where we help you reimagine your future, designing a life and career beyond the nine to five that allows you the freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment that you've been dreaming of. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg. Now let's get started on those dreams. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. Now, we have been looking at leaving the nine to five, and last week we looked at, okay, if we want to make this happen, if we want to change direction in our career, leave our role as a full-time employee and really explore what it might look like to work for ourselves, run our own business in 2021, because we are coming to the end of the year now, then what should we be doing? So do have a listen to that last week. We're going to be shifting gears a little bit because since we are coming to the end of the year and it's the beginning of the year, of course, we get into New Year's resolution territory. Now, if you know me at all, and and you'll certainly be hearing this in the coming weeks, I'm not a fan necessarily of resolutions and I have a slightly different approach when it comes to setting goals for the new year and we'll be looking at that soon. But I thought just to transition into that, I wanted to talk to you about, okay, So we want to make this transition, we're looking for some kind of different role, business and so on. What could be a useful way in which we really make this concrete? And the reality is we're always going to be bombarded, I almost want to say, and it's a good problem, bombarded with different ideas, uh, different suggestions and requests, and perhaps recruiters will come to us. Um, Certainly, so the experience I had when I first left my job was, and I wasn't very clear on what I wanted to do, which is always a bit of a dangerous territory. Um, It's very easy to be swayed by other people. You have a coffee with someone, oh, they're doing this, maybe I should do that too, or hey, can you help me out with this? And then you get involved in someone else's project, which could be exciting and, and interesting to learn different things. And of course, it's a good way to hit the ground running, but it's not necessarily what you want to do. And then recruiters, by definition, are always going to put you into a pigeonhole, a black box, I want to say, at least to put you into a very clear um, square hole of this is your exact background and I'm going to put you into the same kind of role now going forwards. A recruiter, an HR manager is not going to help you generally to navigate this transition into a different role where you're doing completely different things, you're using different skills, you're evolving your experience. And certainly, of course, they're not going to come and present you with your ideal business. So all that to say that something that I use with my clients and that I always recommend that you do is to look at your criteria or your parameters for the transition. Now, I'm sure I've shared this before and I'll call out my manager again, Vincenzo, from my very first job in the corporate world. And he talked about when we change assignments to really think about, okay, what are your non-negotiable criteria, your top three? sort of one, two, three, because you can't demand, or maybe you can if you're very optimistic and idealistic, you can't demand that, okay, I want to have a role in New York and I want it to be in this department and on this brand and I want a promotion, et cetera, et cetera. You need to be clear. At the time, you know, I had colleagues who maybe had their boyfriend or girlfriend back home in England. So one of their top criteria then was to have a role in the UK. Okay, you might then need to compromise on the brands that are available there, the roles that are available. Or, no, I'm really ready for my promotion. Okay, well, you need to take these steps to get yourself into the right position. So that was a really useful framework. And again, it's something I use now. Whether you're changing career into a different role, industry, company, or you're wanting to start a business. And in either of those scenarios, having these criteria clear in your mind, having the parameters are really important and useful. So, okay, what kind of things should we be considering when we're looking at our criteria? Well, I want to keep it quite practical and specific. Nonetheless, I do like to start with, you know, are there any really important sort of more subjective ideas um, for what your next role should be. So for example, and you might want to grab a pen and paper, by the way, maybe listen to this again, if you want to really use this as an active session. And if you're listening when you can't uh, write anything, then don't worry, you can pause and come back later or listen again. Let the words wash wash or waft over you for now. Um, So really, I like to talk about Ikigai and you, I'm sure, have heard me talk about this before. And if not, there's this Japanese idea often depicted as a Venn diagram of work that you really are good at, that you really enjoy, that feels meaningful to you, that the world needs where you're really making a difference. 
and that you can monetize that's going to pay you. So depending on where you are on that diagram today, and for example, those of us in a corporate job are often in sort of, I'm, I'm good at this, I'm getting paid, but I don't love it and it doesn't feel meaningful to me. Depending on where you are today, you can then think, okay, what's the priority for where I want to be in my next role in the business, right? So it could be, you know what, I'm earning quite a bit of money and I'm really good at this. However, my next role really has to be something I love doing or my next role, my next business has to be something that I feel is aligned with my values, where I feel I'm making a meaningful contribution that's really tied to this cause or mission that I believe in. On the other hand, perhaps you are working in an area where really you do believe in what you're doing and it's something you're so passionate about, you love it. However, you're not earning lots of money, in which case, you know what, maybe the next role, the next stage of your business needs to be much more focused on bringing in that money. So that is a first step, I guess, of coming up with your parameters. Is there a general direction of your ikigai, as it were, that you need to take this next role, this next business? Is it that you want to be doing more meaningful work? Or are you already doing meaningful work and you want more money? Really think about sort of what's the priority in this next phase. So that could be the first set of criteria in terms of, okay, the next role has to be me using these skills. It has to be something I'm going to enjoy. It has to be exciting and it has to be something, and it is quite subjective, that feels meaningful, that I really feel like I'm making a difference that's tied to this cause of women's rights or empowerment of, of young girls or you know, those are things that come to mind for me or, or whatever the, the passionate topic and cause that you really want to get involved in climate change and so on. So number one, sort of the direction of Ikigai. Now, number two could be more preferences. And this is important then to understand what your preferences are. So, for example, thinking of the work you've done so far, you know, do you enjoy being in an office? Maybe through, you know, as I record this, a lot of you have been working from home anyway. So do you prefer being at home? Do you like working by yourself at the desk? Um, Or do you prefer being out and about, literally out on the streets or out meeting clients, hustling away on the phone all the time? Do you like to work in an intimate setting where you're really getting deep with somebody one-to-one, one-to-a-small group? Or do you love the buzz of being on a stage or on camera in front of lots of people and you like to, you know, field questions from all different directions and you like to almost do a bit more sort of surface help or, or whatever it is that you're doing with a lot of people? What kind of office environment do you really bounce off the team? Or again, do you do work better and um, by yourself? You know, so really thinking about the environment and your preferences of how you like to work virtually or in person, um, alone or in a team, individually in a group, in a massive group, and so on, right? So maybe live or recorded as some more concrete things to think about in terms of the kind of content and maybe courses and programs you do. Maybe, you know, thinking of myself as a, as a coach or a consultant, do I prefer to work? I want to have five really high level clients that I work with. You know, it's going to cost a lot of money, six figures each. And we're going to work at least for a year. I'll be pretty much always available, of course, while setting boundaries and, and you know, having um, priorities in terms of self-care and not being on call 24-7. But, you know, I'm going to really show up and over deliver and be your um, partner. We're going to literally link arms and do this together and I'm going to work with VIP clients at a high end with just a handful of you or do I actually want to reach more people and I'd rather do a case slightly less deep because of course you can't commit to that many people at that high level obviously then charging a little less still charging well for the quality and and from your worth for your worth and so on and then I'd be working maybe in group programs or smaller intimate masterminds and so on maybe it's a combination of the two probably most likely for me and but really thinking about you know what does that look like for you do you want to have um six month engagements uh one-off projects you actually just like coming in boop, 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 you do your thing and then you come away um do you like to actually know I'd prefer to work you know ongoing and pretty much full time with somebody for a longer time or you know actually I'm gonna have a few clients etc you know there's a whole um host of infinite possibilities in terms of different constellation of how you might to work together or, or not together by yourself so you know traveling to clients offices or not obviously again through the lens of what's been happening in the world now virtual does have a lot of um, advantages so that's something that probably should at least be part of the strategy but in terms of criteria again really think of okay what is the setup what's the office environment do I want to be traveling and so on, right? And that, in fact, leads to the third bucket. So we talked the ikigai, the general big picture direction. 
Then we talk your preferences. The third one then is practical considerations. And this is sort of linked to preferences, but it's even more important in a way because it's not just, oh, I'd like to work in a group or I thrive when I'm in a team or I work better by myself. It's really, no, I need to earn this amount in order to put my kids through private school, to be able to take the holidays I want to do, to support my aging parents, your children, um, dog, whatever, right? I need to be able to pay pay the bills. What are your practical considerations? And number one probably is going to be salary. If you're leaving a corporate job to work for yourself, then, you know, you don't have to give up your salary. You might want to earn more, you might want to earn less, and that's fine. But get clear on what that number is so that you know that's really non-negotiable. So salary, maybe again, um, timing, when when you're going to work, when you're not going to work is really important. So your schedule, is it three days a week you want to be working? Is it only mornings? You don't want to work Fridays. You want to be able to pick up the kids from school. Um, you know, you actually don't mind working evenings and weekends, but you don't want to get up early in the morning. What does that look like? Do you want to stick to the classic Monday to Friday because that works quite well for you? Who knows? So really think about sort of your schedule and the flexibility there as well. Location, of course, do you want to work from home? And again, this is something I talked about in terms of your preferences, but is it a non-negotiable? Because actually you need to be available at home. You need to have that flexibility to be available for your kids or, or whatever that is, right? So what are the really important practical considerations in terms of salary, in terms of location? Maybe you can't commute um, or you, in fact, can't sit in an office because maybe of your health, right? Maybe you have back problems or, or whatever that might be, or you can't sit in front of a screen all the time. So really think about all the practical considerations. And I've mentioned the word non-negotiable there a few times, and that's really the next step. So, okay, by the way, and I've, I've gone through this quite quickly, there may be many other areas you want to consider, right? So the point here is to consider everything that is important in making this decision for you or making a decision or many decisions in the coming weeks, months, if not years. So think about the big picture, ikigai, you know, is it that I'm looking for purpose right now? Am I looking for passion? Am I looking for money? Am I looking to use a different skill set? Whatever that looks like, number one bucket of criteria. Number two, what are my preferences? So how do I want to work? Where, with whom, in what kind of environment and format? Do I want to be teaching? Do I want to be advising? Do I want to be partnering with people? Do I want to be doing the work myself? Coaching, there are all sorts of different dynamics we could have. And then finally, number three is those practical considerations, salary, location, commute, travel, and so on, right? So really important. Now, again, I mentioned non-negotiable and I like to dial it into three. So once you've got all these things and maybe you've done a mind map, hopefully you've jotted these down, you've got a long list, you might want to take either three different colored pens or go one, two, three. So one is non-negotiable. Two is important, but could be compromised. And three is, oh, nice to have, you know, I'd love that, but maybe it's not necessary. So non-negotiable is really probably going to be, I need to have at least this minimum salary. I can't work more than X hours a day. And I don't want the commute to be longer than this or whatever that is, right? The important could be, I really want to love the work I'm doing, make a difference. And by the way, that could also be a non-negotiable for you. So just you get to decide where this sits in the hierarchy. And then nice to have, um, you know, really thinking about, okay, I would love to be able to do X, Y, Z, but perhaps it's not possible in the short term. Don't give up yet. It is still possible for the future. But for now, at least for my next role, for my early stage of my business, this isn't going to be a non-negotiable. It's going to be, oh, I'd love it if I could work by the sea or if I could, um, I don't know, work with this type of client and so on, right? I think that's really important. In fact, probably important more than nice to have even, but not necessarily non-negotiable. But again, completely up to you. And that's the point. So why is this so powerful? And hopefully you'll see this. Well, again, people will come at you and it might sound surprising when you're sort of on the side of fear and worrying about work and so on. It's a good problem to have. Again, there will be opportunities and ideas and projects coming at you. And rather than being torn in a million different directions and concerned, do I take this? Do I take that? And so on. You know, unfortunately, we're never going to have complete information of every possible dimension and parallel dimension. We don't have all the offers on the table at the same time either. So I might have something today and then I'll get something in three weeks. I might get something in six months and I can't compare them at the same time. So when these ideas, when these projects or suggestions come along, I can refer to my criteria and literally you can take out that piece of paper if it's a post-it or, you know, a document, a checklist almost. You can do it as, as advanced or as informal as you'd like. You can really go, okay, 
this particular role or idea that I have or suggestion that someone else has had, proposal, whatever, it actually ticks my non-negotiable and a few of my importance. So yes, actually, it wasn't quite what I thought, but hey, it's a really good step in the right direction. Or, oh, no, not at all. Like, yes, it's a lot of money, but no, it's not actually, you know, I was looking for meaning. I was looking for um, flexibility with my family. I was looking for X, Y, Z, and that's not a fit at all. So it takes a little bit of the emotion and the subjectivity out of these decisions. It gives you some kind of parameters, checklists to be able to measure as much as we can ever measure these kinds of decisions. And by the way, the criteria don't have to be really um, concrete and tangible. They could also be a little bit subjective. So it could be my gut feeling is positive or I feel instinctively that it's something I want to do. That's harder to judge, but it probably should be on that list. It's a really important one too. So there you go. Again, three buckets of criteria, really big picture, ikigai. Is it meaning? Is it the skills? Is it the passion? Is it the money that you're after? general direction, big theme of this next role, this next stage of your life. And we will be talking about the theme for the new year as well very soon. So is it, you know, what's that theme? What's the general direction? Secondly, what preferences do you have? And that will help you again, the kind of um, environment in which you thrive and, and where you really want to be adding value and where you know you can add the most value and how. And then finally, again, those practical considerations probably salary, income, um, and and physical, you know, location and commute and so on. And then again, mark them non-negotiable, important and nice to have. And then use it. Don't let this be something else that you put into your drawer. You know, really look at that and use it actively. Um, you don't have to share it. You probably shouldn't share it with um, the, the recruiter necessarily or the, um, the friend of yours who's coming with a project and said, no, I'm so sorry, that doesn't take my non-negotiable criteria here. Um, but certainly it's something you can use behind the scenes. And by all means, you know, agree those parameters with your partner. Um, if you've got old children, uh, you know, run it by a coach or a mentor and check, you know, is this really, am I being overly ambitious? Am I actually being too sort of cynical and holding myself back? Really try to get to a good place where you're, you're really clear on, okay, but what am I actually after? What is my definition of success right now for the short term and of course, longer term as well? So I hope that's useful. If you haven't thought about it this way before, I hope you can try to get your mind around getting those parameters and criteria more clear in your mind rather than going, okay, is it this role or that role? Is it this type of business or that type of business? And getting caught up in, in the details of that already before you even know the parameters with which you want to make the decision. So hopefully that's useful to you. Best of luck. And I look forward to hearing how you get on. I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Do you feel like you're just not where you want to be professionally and you're ready to reimagine a life and career outside of the corporate nine to five? I can help you get clarity on what exactly it is you want to do instead, overcome your fears and mental blocks to finally take action and help you manage your time, energy and priorities through the transition. Apply for your free clarity call with me at onestepoutside.com forward slash clarity call. I can't wait to get you started with that one step. So sign up now at onestepoutside.com forward slash clarity call.